It's uh, Tuesday, January 10th, and thanks so much for being here, and welcome to my channel, Everyday Talk 24-7. This week, we're looking at Psalm 2. Last night, I gave kind of a big picture of what Psalm 2 is about in terms of how the rulers of the world are foolishly going against God, and it's not going to work. Well, tonight, I'm going to shift that over to something that's very personal as it impacts us. Psalm 2 obviously applies to the whole global scene, but it applies to it now where we are in a slightly different way. It's about the heart. The most powerful human force on this planet is the human heart. And what we want to do is guard that heart from insanity. So that's why you see the thumbnail tonight with the sword, the sword of the spirit, obviously. But we want to guard our hearts from insanity. All right, and what's the particular insanity I'm talking about? Let me quickly read the first three verses, opening verses of Psalm 2 again. Why do the nations rage? And why do people keep plotting hopeless plans? Why do the kings of earth take their stand? And why do rulers conspire together against Yahweh? and against his anointed king, that's Jesus. Let us rip off their fetters. Let us throw off their cords. It's the Ralph Davis translation. Let us rip away all the constraints. Let's not be bound up by God anymore. He's just a myth. Let's just do away with him and enjoy ourselves. Well, now, now that Christ has come, and we're under his rule and his kingdom. So the battleground has shifted from primarily to the political kingdoms of earth to the kingdom of the heart, your heart. That's the real raging battle that Psalm 2 is talking about. Just a couple of passages to break that up. In John 18, to break that down, in John 18, Jesus has that confrontation with Pilate. And Pilate's getting, the longer he talks to Jesus, the more unnerving it is for him. And then he finally says to Jesus, so you are a king. Is that right? And Jesus responds, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I wouldn't be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. See, this is not about political boundaries anymore. This is about the domain of the heart. In Colossians 1, we read this, that we have been rescued from the kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of God's dear Son, the kingdom of Christ. Revelation, in the first chapter, verses 5 and 6, make it even tighter for us. John is saying to him, that's Jesus, who loves us and is set us free from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom. Get that? Made us a kingdom. Priest of his God and Father. To him, Christ, be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Made us to be a kingdom. So now I can look at Psalm 2, and not only in the big world, political, global scene, but I can make it about right here because this is the kingdom that's being talked about. Why do the kings of earth rage and take their stand against God? They want to do away with God. They don't want a part of it. You see, the battle is for your heart. Don't give in to the insanity. Guard your heart from the insanity that says that God is not the one who's in charge. That his ways, that his laws, that his care, that his promises are our hope. What Satan was able to do to Adam and Eve was to make them think that God's rules were the problem. That God's law was the problem. The rule of God is keeping you from being all you can be. Keeping you from being really human keeping you from being really genuine. Keeping you from knowing what's really cool about life. 
And sadly, they bought that lie. So this battle for the heart that is typified in verse 3, let us rip off their controls, their change, that is the controls of God and his son, his anointed king. Let us throw off their cords. Let's not be bound anymore by this God stuff. And you see, we've had this happening all around in our culture. We don't pay attention to God in education. We don't pay attention to him in morality. Each heart determines its own morality the way we live today. The problem with that is that the human heart, left to its own desires and serving only itself, is a weapon of abuse and personal devastation. It feeds on the delusion that it has no need of the rule of God. See, this is mocking God when we think we can get along without Him. When we think we can do life without God. And we're going to talk more specifics as the week goes on. But I just want to get this clear tonight. When we throw off the role of God, we no longer can protect ourselves from the insanity of the world. Doing things our own way. How do we know it's insanity? Because what God says in verse 4 in Psalm 2. The one who sits in heaven, in the heavens, laughs. The Lord mocks at them. Therefore, guard your heart from this insanity. This foolishness, this idea that we don't need God, that we can do sex the way they want, that we can live our life for our desires, that we are best equipped to know ourselves. What has that got us? How's that working out for us? How's in the last 50, 60, 70 years, the last 100 years, what we have decided as a country, as, as Americans and much of Western civilization, we don't need God anymore. We're cool. We can go our own way. How's that working out for us? Lives are not more settled. Marriages are not strong. Sex has become a weapon, a desire an entitlement rather than a gift that you give. My own personal development without regard to God, without finding my identity in Christ, trying to find my identity with myself, leads me, pray, to this human heart, which serving only itself winds up being a weapon of abuse and personal devastation because we don't think that the rule of God matters. But it does. God laughs at that. Not laughing at people, but laughing at the idea that we can do life on our own. He's the one that gives us our next breath. Determines where we should live. Determines the day when we will die. He's in control of the whole thing. And we think we can do without him. That is insanity. And we're going to continue talking about this week. But please, guard your heart from the insanity that you can do life without the direction and loving commandments of God. Because it's not working out for our culture. And if you're trying it, it's not working out for you. We are that dependent upon God. Check us out, everydaytalk247.com. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, if you're, the, You can get those um, God Does Not Take Coffee mic, break mugs. You can get those uh, at my website by checking out the, ch- shop, the uh, shopping section. Again, such an honor to be with you each day. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. You have a great evening. Bye-bye.